Good morning, this is Mr. Eck, recording from our both lovely and scenic library conference room. Uh, I'm here today to do the test review. This is the first time I've solved these problems. Um, I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes, so I'm going to talk fast. Uh, if you need to see any more details, please go to the video that is associated with that problem. Number one, um, remember this is a no calculator test. So 360 divided by 10 is the same as is 36. You need to be able to do that without a calculator. Um, 360 divided by 40. Zero is cancel. 36 divided by 4 is going to be 9. 360 divided by 5, that one's a little bit trickier, except we just did 360 divided by 10 is 36. So 360 divided by 5 has to be twice as big as that. So uh, because 10 is 5 times 2. So that has to be uh, 72. And then 30, 360 divided by 120, you can cancel the zeros again. 36 divided by 12 is 3. Done. Number two, draw the angle 45, there it is, construct a reference triangle, if it exists, this reference triangle does exist, here it is, remember they're always made with the x-axis. Um, part of constructing a reference triangle is labeling it, you can choose to label your sides however you want. I like the labels 1, 1, and square root of 2. Um, when I say however you want, I mean that it has to match the ratios for that type of special triangle. So you have to know those ratios. Um, but you don't have to put an x in, you can just pick numbers like 1, 1, root 2, instead of x, x, root 2. Uh, sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over root 2, which rationalizes 2 square root of 2 over 2. Um, be sure you're doing your notation like this, sine of 45 equals this. If you write something like sine equals root 2 over 2, that will not be fully correct. If you write something like sine root 2 over 2, not only is that not fully correct, this is something different entirely. So these are both inappropriate ways to write the answers. This is the only appropriate way to write the answer. Um, cosine of 45 is it's a similar, not similar triangle, it's a symmetric triangle, so that's going to be the same value, square root of 2 over 2, and tangent of 45 is going to be 1 over 1, or just 1. Done. Next, find sine of 180, cosine of negative 90, and tangent of 450. All right, I'm going to start by drawing a unit circle. So uh, this circle has a radius of 1, and I'm going to put the four points on here. I might not need all four, but it feels like I'll need at least three of them. So this is going to be 1, 0. This point is 0, 1. This point is negative 1, 0. And this point is 0, negative 1. All right, 180 is like this. Uh, we know that sine of theta equals x. Uh, I'm sorry. Sine of theta equals y, cosine of theta equals x. So uh, sine of 180 must equal 0. Cosine of negative 90, negative 90 is right here. And I'm looking for cosine, so I'm going to look for the x coordinate. So that's also going to equal 0. And tangent of 450. Um, 450 is 360, and 90 more. So I'm really looking at uh, the angle 90. So tangent 450 is going to be the same as tangent of 90. That's uh, y over x, and that's going to be then 0, uh, no, 1 over 0, which is undefined. Remember that dividing by 0 gives you an undefined value. If you have something like 0 over 1, that's equal to 0, not undefined. That's not an answer to any of these problems. Next, find three values of theta such that sine of theta is equal to sine of 20. This is a little bit tricky. Um, here's my 20. I like a picture. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So... One thing that I can do is find coterminals. I could do 20 plus 360, 
to get uh, 380. But the statement said your answers have to be between negative 360 and 360. So 380 is true in the first half, but it's wrong in the second half. So I can't have that one. I can do 20 minus 360. That's basically saying this angle right here, which is going to be negative 340. You have to have the negative there. That's important. It shows the direction of the angle. Okay, that's the only one that we can do with coterminal stuff. Now we've got to think about other quadrants. So 20, uh, if it's going to have the same sign as 20, it must have the same hypotenuse and opposite, including positive and negative. So opposite here is positive because it's above the x-axis. So in the other quadrant over here, I'll also have um, opposite positive. Hypotenuse will also always be positive. So really, I could be thinking about 20 degrees in the second quadrant, but it's not 20 degrees in the second quadrant that we want to list. We want to list that whole angle, and that's going to be uh, 160 degrees. So 160 degrees will work. And then we also want to do the negative coterminal to 160. So we could do 160 uh, minus 360, and we get 200 degrees. So there's three possible answers, negative 340, 160 in the second quadrant, and 200, uh, or negative 200, which is also ends up being in the second quadrant. I almost forgot that negative. If I had forgotten that negative, it would not be a correct answer. So be sure you have the negative in there. All right, list the full names of all six trig functions. So we have sine, which has abbreviation S-I-N, cosine, which has abbreviation C-O-S, and tangent, which has abbreviation T-A-N. The reciprocal of tangent is cotangent, which has abbreviation C-O-T. The, the reciprocal of cosine is secant, which has abbreviation S-E-C, like the athletic conference. And the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, S-E-C-A-N-T, which has abbreviation C-S-C. Um, reciprocal relationships are uh, these. So um, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals, cosine and secant are reciprocals, and sine and cosecant are reciprocals. If you have a hard time remembering what's a reciprocal of what, remember that each pair of reciprocals can only have one co-prefix, um, tangent and cotangent. And then uh, if you can remember that cosine can't have, can't go with cosecant, because you're only allowed to have one co-prefix, so cosine would have to go with secant. Number six, uh, the average measured population of one kind of tropical insect was 1,000 10 months later. So they're asking us to make a graph. Um, I'm going to label this as 1,000. 10 months later, we'll mark this as 10. The population is at its measured value of 5,000. That's its maximum. All right, so from 10 to 5,000, that's a gap of 4,000. So um, from uh, going backwards, it's going to have a population of negative 3,000. And as I solve this, I realize that this doesn't really match a word problem very well. Um, but we're going to make the graph anyway. Maybe they're talking about it with reference to some other average or population. I don't know. Um, so here's that. Um, 10 months later. So the graph starts out looks, looking like this. Now the graph has to go back down. That's going to go back down and meet at 20. Then it has to go down to the minimum of 3,000. That's going to happen at 30. And then it has to go back up to the start uh, of 1,000. That has to happen at 40. All right, so the period is 40 seconds. The amplitude is 4,000. Um, and the midline is 1,000. So the equation is going to be y equals uh, 4,000 sine of 9x plus 1. 
1,000. 4,000 sine of 9x plus 1,000. 9 comes from doing 360 divided by 40. Don't forget to do the 360 divided by 40 if you're going to get the number inside the equation. The period never appears inside the equation. Number seven, graph at least two full periods of this function. All right. Um, the midline is minus four. Uh, it has an amplitude of three, so that means it's going to go up to negative one and down to negative seven. It's going to have a uh, period of 360 divided by 12. Um, 36 divided by 12 would be 3, so this will have a period of 30. So I'll go ahead and mark um, 30 out here. And then uh, halfway will be 15 and 7.5 and uh, 22.5 going half, 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 half. So it's going to be at the zero, it's going to be at the maximum, it's going to reach the midline, it's going to be at the minimum, and it's going to be back uh, there. So there's one full period of the graph. Sorry, my curve doesn't match. Notice how I put my points on there. So even though my curve is kind of bad this time, um, it matches the points that are shown. And same deal, show that you know the cycle of a full period by drawing another one. The second full period, you don't have to label out quite as thoroughly, but I'll at least label that this is uh, 60. Don't show that. That's not like part of the graph. That's 60. Um, and the graph kind of continues off in that way, and it would continue off in that direction. All right. Next, 